Hi, I'm Chris from C Walton and Design, and this is a video talking about several ways to learn from the best to improve your renders and animations. This one's gonna be a little bit more animation based in this case, but maybe later I'll do one specifically on still renders. I wanted to do this tutorial and base it on a specific story that I have of one of my past projects. I thought it would maybe give it a little bit more of a personal touch to things it was, it, and make it really very real. There's plenty of videos and online articles that say how to improve your renders. Step one, step two, step three with some pictures. There's plenty of that out there and I think those are awesome. I've learned a lot from them, but I'm trying a different approach. I'm gonna talk about specific examples I've had. I'm gonna get into the details and I hope that it's something I can relate better with you guys and something that'll resonate with you to improve your guys' renders and how to just approach things in a different way. Add to that toolbox as I've mentioned in other videos. So let's lay out the problem. This was a large government building in downtown Sacramento. It wasn't a skyscraper, but sure, it was a tall office building. And whenever I think of those renderings, those are those are really nice. People and the architects called in and they get they get the people who are really good to do these type of renderings. And at that point, this was in 2017, um, I'd done some hospitals, I'd done houses, I've done several commercial projects, but this just felt like the next level and I did not feel like I was currently able to produce something that they were expecting, that I at least I had in my mind that I was expecting. So that is why I decided to take a look at some examples. And maybe I'm unique on this, but I have a hard time watching these type of animations. That it's hard for me to do this. I used to be a trumpet player. I used to be the best in my high school. And then I joined drum corps in a much larger regional grab of other trumpet players and all of a sudden I was not the best anymore and I hated it. Uh, it of course made me grow, but I think that carries over to this. I have a hard time looking at it. And maybe some of you guys know you, you're looking at the best all of the time and learning from it and that's awesome. But for me, it, it, it could be discouraging in a certain way, so I just naturally avoid it. But this was the time to grow. I needed to get better. I needed to learn from those and not just sit there in my shell, in my comfort zone, saying, you know, this is what I know how to do. I feel comfortable with the, the level that I do in my own sphere. And I, and I've, I see myself getting better, but sometimes you just, you take a look at that and you're like, wow, I'm, I, I could be a lot better. But that's part of growth and it helped me to grow here. So I didn't wanna make this video super long. Let's just jump through the five things that I pulled from and I'll have examples playing too to showcase some of these things. Starting with number one, and this was a little harder to showcase, but the idea was the story. As I watched a lot of these animations, some of them were great compilations of, of B-roll shots and, and beautiful footage. Technically brilliant, but they didn't impact me like the stories did. The ones that had a story that built and it had a purpose, those ones stood out. I didn't quite know exactly what it was. I just knew, hey, I need to plan for this before I get into any of these things to hit those moments. I can't just rely on luck. I have to create the structure, build everything else around it. So story is huge, especially in this situation. We need to start at the bottom, we need to end at the top, and the top needed to be the climax. Just having that beforehand set me up for success. So number two, in this case, having an, a subject really, really brings things to another level, another personal level, human scale level um, that was needed for a day in the life. In several of the examples, I saw the camera following a car. And, and that was pretty cool. I, I liked that, but a car was not going to work for us. This was an, this was in downtown, it was public transit. There, there, we weren't really doing much of parking. We needed to emphasize you know, pedestrian access and a person experiencing this whole office building. None of the animations I actually watched followed a person like I did, but I thought about Hollywood. I thought about how to achieve this and that's how it worked out. And I got really lucky with this with this uh, Lumion uh, person model here because they were the same color 
They had the same color hair and, and, and clothes, standing and walking. Otherwise, usually Lumion will, will differentiate those a little bit to kind of you know, get the most out of the models and not make them look all the same. This one, it worked perfect. So I could, could have her walking, have her standing and talking. If it was just one of those, it, it would have been a lot harder. Having a subject in the shot makes things so much more interesting too. It's almost like a guided tour throughout this building. Now, number three, what need to accompany that was camera work, intelligent camera work. At this point, I knew how to kind of shoot B-roll like shots to get some really smooth things. And B-roll shots are still really powerful and useful, but I needed to better tell this story and follow our subject. So I thought a lot about Hollywood, you know, how someone, and, and these car animations too, the, the car moving from one shot to the other, how the camera moves and follows them. They're like, come, the camera's here, car goes into here, comes out of frame, and then next camera's here, car's coming this way. That's probably not selling it super well here, but you guys get the, the idea in these examples. And dare I say it, there was um, uh, another inspiration I had actually is from, well, Grand, Grand Theft Auto, the game. There was a special camera, uh, I called a camera button called like cinema camera or action camera, I can't remember. But you're driving, when you're like driving your car, you can push this button and instead of having a first person or a third person view behind you in your car driving, it'll take it to a cinematic camera where it looks like a helicopter is taking a look at you as you're driving and when you, as soon as you get in a frame, it switches to maybe on the ground as your car drives by or it switches to a, an orbiting helicopter this time. It looks like a movie, like an action movie. And that, it, it clicked then and it's, it's funny, but it, it worked. That's how I did it. She walked from one frame and ended in the other and I moved the camera over here and either the camera stays still, pans, or did some slide movements and, and other B-roll things. That was the core of it and it really helped go throughout this whole building. Number four is adding just a little bit of flair and pop in there. Smooth camera shots are great, but this was gonna be a longer animation and attention spans are short. The design was pretty cool of this office building, but if it's kind of the same thing over and over again, people are gonna get kind of bored. So you gotta just add a couple little cool shots in there to catch their attention again and make them go, oh wow, that's really cool. Is it super useful for the design? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. So I took a look at several shots that I found really interesting and intriguing from several of these animations and I pulled many of them. And there's a couple other ones playing after this that I, I didn't happen to use, but I still think are really cool. One example here is I, I love when some of these example shots went outside the building to look in from the glass. I mean, a, a, an angle no one's going to see unless they're flying, unless they're hang gliding or flying a drone or a helicopter, but it, it kind of worked. It was tiny interior space to the exterior in a way that, you know, it's kind of cool to do cinematically. I did that here. Here's our subject looking outside in our view, which was an important aspect of this. And then we pull from the outside seeing her looking out while we're kind of looking at the exterior elements, how they relate, and then bam, somehow she somehow she just hustles back over here and we're following her again. So these were cool little spark moments that added in there. And another thing that I was noticing that I'll keep in this category too was a time lapse. I, I love the look at time lapses. And at that moment in time, I'm, I remember seeing a couple cool time, time lapse examples and thinking, how can I, how could I do that with my software I was using Lumion? It sat in the back of my mind throughout the entire process. I really wanted it because it, the, again, the theme was a day in the life. How I thought it'd be an awesome shot to show this building alive with the blurred people walking back and forth in a time-lapse look as the, as the sun goes throughout an entire day study and lights up at night. I, I love that shot too. And ironically, funny story is it, this came to me midnight before everything was due. Somehow I was thinking about it in the back of my mind and I realized how I can achieve it in my software, Lumion at the time. It was, it was kind of a tricky hack that just worked out perfectly. I was able to render it quickly and get the look and it, we'd slapped at the end. It was, it was awesome. It, it worked great for what we needed. That little bit of pop, that it, it ended on that. And that 
those little things made a difference. Number five, music. Music is huge. Just think, think about a movie. Think of some of your favorite movies and, and the soundtracks and what they, what they add to it. I'm, everyone talks about this pretty often and it works just as well when we focus on it so much in architectural animation and in storytelling. Going back to the story and the framework, we needed to emphasize the roof. That was the climax, and we needed to go through a couple different sections. And so we have, we actually happened to hire a composer who was a friend of mine who put the music together for this, and we separated the main sections or chapters from the, you know, the ground floor to the office space to building up to the rooftop in different tracks. And it really, helped move things along, get a, give a different emotion and texture to things. And the best part of this whole thing was the build-up going to the roof, the sun had set, and this moment where the music just hit right as we're doing this beautiful shot showcasing downtown Sacramento and the Capitol building as it's you know, about to light lit up at night. And our actress is walking, our subject walking, whatever reason, just happens to look right at the building, the, the focal point. Super cool, music hit right then. When this was all said and done and we showcased this to the, um, the design team, there, there were tears shed. It was, it, it really made an impact. It, it, it sounds corny just talking about it that way, but it, it really, it really hit. Um, when we presented it to the actual client, I heard it was silent. You could hear a pin drop. And that's the kind of thing that even the best graphics in the world can't necessarily just give you. This comes from storytelling and planning and a, com and a combination of all these different things. Having that goal through the story and carrying it out. And it, the, the animation did what it needed to do. I hate to end the story on a bad note. We didn't actually win the project. It's, those are always complex issues. It wasn't because of the animation. The animation did its job, and it hit that um, it hit that impact. Even though it's a it was a lost project to us, it still remains one of my favorite projects and one of my best examples in storytelling. Uh, I hope to get an opportunity to do something like that again, and I will follow the same advice. I'll I'll take a look at some inspirational, incredible animations out there and take note again. And this is. And this is the point of this video. Watch these with purpose. Think about your specific situation when you watch these and just notice the things that catch your attention that you want to add to yours. Figure out what they are and then start even looking at things, the little things like what focal lengths are they using? How, how long are their clips? What's the music like? How are they transitioning? How are they starting it? How are they ending the, vi the video? How important are textures to all of this? Lighting, coloring, all of these things, you know, the best are mastering all of them. Everything is done with purpose. So it's always great to learn from them, even if they makes, it makes your work feel like child's play. At least we'll move one bar up. We'll get a little closer there. We need to get our job done and we need to tell those stories. This is what I learned and I hope that helps you guys out. I hope you guys like the format that I'm trying just by telling personal stories. Uh, I have a couple other cool stories too. Uh, I wanna know if these hit. I wanna I know if you guys prefer this to just a dry list. You'll find plenty of those online and I've learned from them myself. I just wanna try a different approach. So thanks for watching guys. I hope that helped. Follow the best. I have a link to several incredible studios worth following. There's plenty of others too. Try it out. Start the habit today, especially when you need that extra push to get you to their level. Thanks for watching. Until next time.